This photo here is the center wing section, the forward main spar from NA337. You can see quite how long it is here. Now the one that we have in the temporary shelter has been severed across this section here and the same thing over here. This is the center of the aircraft right here is which is actually well it comes down here more. That is the part that we have in the uh, in the um, temporary shelter and this is actually where the crew would sit in this section here on the aircraft as it was taking off and landing because it was the strongest part of the aircraft and virtually no one ever got hurt in there. Now this is after we take out the other pieces and sections of uh, from the wing box sections. We have through the courtesy of Sprung Shelter Corporation out in Alberta they have really helped us a lot. What they do is they build um, quite large shelters that are either fabric covered or they can be covered with fiberglass whichever and they have all these aluminum extrusions. What they did for us was help design that we purchased a aluminum extrusion die. Now we have in our possession they also helped us get it manufactured. We have 10 aluminum extruded spar caps which are the same top and bottom. But as you can see this is the next phase of the construction. Uh, I have to build another uh, jigging table as you can see here. The whole thing was designed so that you could put it up, level it, adjust everything so that it was absolutely perfectly straight. This is not how it was originally built but to, facil to facilitate uh, our needs this was the easiest way of doing it. Now so that you can see the actual size. Again this piece right here to this piece right here. This is what we have in the shelter, the temporary workshop, and these are the pieces that are still out at the museum in the uh, box sections. They have to be removed. But as you can see, it's approximately 30 feet long from end to end, and these are the pickups where the intermediate wings will come on to. Again, here is a shot of it, same thing. This is after it was restored. I would actually put it at about 96% original. After we use various means of cleaning, you know, through phosphates, high, uh, high concentrated detergents, glass beading, even uh, hand uh, scrubbing with uh, scotch bright and everything, these pieces, every rivet was replaced, everything was cleaned. The only thing that we really didn't use was the new, uh, new bolts because the old ones we couldn't use them. So it's essentially, other than the new bolts, this is all original and this is pretty well what we're trying to do with the one that we have here. Now again, I thought I would include some other photos. This is again any 337 down at CFB Trenton. This is the front center section spar. It's been laid down. This is where the leading edge would be. This area actually, I, I said that they use this for takeoff and landing. That is true. What it is, is actually the center fuselage set portion for the crew to sit in because they took off from rough strips on grass. You've got few, full fuel tanks because on this particular aircraft, the intermediate wing was all fuel, which is out here. And then if you go out even further, that was your outboard wing section and that was full of fuel as well. So the wings were flexing, there was a lot of load, there was a lot of bounce from the balloon tires. So like uh, the, uh, let's say the tail gunner, which is way back here, he's at the very back of it and he'd be bouncing so hard that he'd be probably smashing his head on top of the turret, which is not exactly a good feeling and probably would really hurt him. But in case that something did happen, that they had to ditch on takeoff or anything like that, and the landing gear folded, these people, would be safe because there was seven in a crew. The pilot was up here. He obviously had to fly. The flight engineer was right in behind him 
he was operating the controls, making sure that the engine pressures and everything were proper. So these two guys down in the front here would have to be there. The rest of the crew, so to make sure that they were safe and to make sure that they accomplished their mission, they were in this area here, which was the strongest part of the aircraft, to ensure their safety. And as you saw from the, uh, the photos earlier, from the uh, outer box sections or wing box sections at the uh, museum, here are the drag braces for the main landing gear, again, and this has been restored. You can see the extent of the restoration. We even had the uh, emergency blowdown bottles for extending the landing gear, uh, landing gear in case there was, you know, some sort of damage that they couldn't lower the landing gear. They actually had these nitrogen blowdown bottles, which means that they were would inflate the hydraulic cylinders that actuated in case the uh, hydraulic fluid leaked out from, say, uh, shrapnel or whatever, a direct hit. Again, this is NA337 down at uh, Trenton. This has been fully restored now. And again, I'm just showing it to show you how actually intricate and how big this piece really is once we finish it. Now again, this is a shot. This is approximately where, well, it's not approximately, this is where our new Halifax is severed. And these again are the outer wing box sections that are laying in the yard right now, waiting for me to take them apart. Now this, again, is where I said is the uh, crewman rest area for takeoff and landing. On here, the seats, uh, the seats are not put in yet, but as you can see, it's almost like a race car roll cage. It's very, very highly stressed. You can see the tubes and the triangulation. This one hadn't been put in at the time. How heavy these upright supports are. Some of the control cables would run through here underneath the seats and go out through the back through fair leads. And basically this is when we were rotating it over. As I said to you about our piece in the, uh, in the shelter, I can't give you an exact weight, but my friend's pickup that we brought it home in is a half ton pickup and when we lowered it in it actually squatted as far as it could go so that's why I'm saying 800 to 1000 maybe plus but this whole wing section I would guess at probably at about I would say five tons which would be about 10,000 pounds and in order to do that we reinforced all the uh, beams because I didn't think that they would actually take the weight because it's just uh, a geodetic dome up here with some uh, steel beams holding it up. And again, here is the shot of an, another shot of the completed center section. They used a lot of elaborate materials. They used basically whatever they could. Some of them had black and white checkerboard. This one in particular had black walnut finished plywood. And believe it or not, this plywood was uh, riveted over top of the um, Bombay area, which held everything together. And here basically it is rotated. Again, you can see the uh, amount of um, material that's in this. These skins were actually the originals. Again, we um, use as much as possible, just like we're going to do with uh, this one that we're starting again. You can see here, this is the re rear spar area. We have also found quite a, a lot of significant other parts that uh, collectors do have. So we're really basically, other than the fuselage and the tailplane and the insides of course, the uh, you know the instruments and things like that, we, ba we basically have half an airplane and that's what we're working towards. We also have a few other things. There was uh, in the uh, scrapyard in Malta, that's why we say Halifax Hastings, we found Halifax parts, we found Hastings parts, one of which was a complete Hastings cockpit. Now, as we examined it, we realized that the Hastings, the controls, the console in the center with all the uh, propeller controls, the throttles and everything, virtually identical to a Halifax. You'd swear it was a Halifax. So again, we do have some other interesting parts that we will be showing. And uh, just keep those comments coming. Like I said, uh, I, 
I'm more than welcome to hear about the comments. And, uh, you know, I appreciate them and I try to explain. But, uh, again, instead of looking at a piece of metal, of, uh, I would like to say as well that uh, since the last time, the, um, the spar caps have been removed. The uh, spar has been flipped. And, uh, you know, we're just carrying on. And I just wanted to show you and explain. But we are now basically at the next step where we have to remove the other pieces of spar from the box wing sections at the museum, then bring them over, remove the truss sections in the center, and as I explained, because it has been severed, we can't use the spar caps, but we have 10 brand new ones. So, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed.